Um, Back again. Sorry about that. Internet. We're having a hard time hearing you this morning. Can okay. you turn the volume up there, Dr. Booth? Let me turn that here for you a little bit. Is that better now? Yeah, better. Okay, I was down too low. I'm sorry about that. Well, listen, uh, the thing was, at, at 14, at 1600, let's get a basic metabolic panel. Okay? And 1600? Yeah, 4 o'clock. And she should be on a low diuretic, like 20 milligrams of Lasix, we'll say Q8 hours. 20 milligrams, Q8 hours. And um, she's on the uh, phenylephrine drip. Now, what's her IV she's, rate running at, Ann? She's um, getting 20 of normal saline an hour and then 15 cc's with the neosinephrine. Mm -hmm. so we want to keep it just at that minimum because she's in pulmonary edema. Okay, that's just fine. Leave it there. That's essentially the lack of saline lock. And then we'll. Um, we're going to add the antibiotics because I think we've got the complication of an aspiration on top of the pulmonary venous. Okay? okay Ma'am? Yeah. Dr. Good. listen, I wish you well with your opium, okay? It's coming. And I'll, so, I'll, be, I'll be back to see you this afternoon. Bobby. So is it Dr. Lacander today? Yeah, it's Lacander today. I'm, I'm really not seeing her except in a teaching manner. Okay, so we're doing a urine culture, a student culture. We're starting an antibiotic. We're giving her low dose. Um, Lasix, and we're doing some lab work at 1600 or 1600, at 2 o'clock? 1600. Well, uh, 1600 is good, 4 o'clock. <coughs> 4 o'clock, okay. And, and will be in to see you later. He works with me. He's on call today. I'm not on call. He's your teacher. Okay. Okay. Oh, and guess what? You have Dr. Andage here who would love to speak to you this morning. Bruce, hello. Let me come over there a minute. All right. I'll change that. <laughs> Oops. Sorry about that. Goodbye, ma'am. Hello, Bruce. Hi. Hi. I just, I just want to know if you, you saw that there's a 12 o'clock uh, web conference today on a uh, parenteral uh, uh, Tamiflu, CDC. Yeah, I, I I didn't know that. I won't be able to make it. But uh, uh, I'm not trying to get to it. Yeah. You know, there, there, are a couple of, there, there are a couple new drugs out for um, H1N1, uh, in addition to the Tamiflu. Um, there's a bunch of them. They're Miravirs, mir they're called. And, but they're not cleared, as far as I know yet, by the uh, uh, Federal Drug Administration. That's the problem with it. Uh, but uh, listen, Bruce, take a look at that, and uh, we'll, we'll discuss it on this guy right now. He's on a good dose of tablet, 150 twice daily. Yeah, he's on everything. Yeah, and I right. think that, that, that'll suffice. I did something that a pulmonologist does when he's desperate yesterday. I, I, I did something yesterday when a pulmonologist is desperate. I put him uh -huh. on steroids. Yeah, I saw that. I saw the steroids. The other question is the uh, what's the point of magnesium when your blood when your serum level is two point one? What's the advantage of giving magnesium? Probably none. Probably none. Yeah. And, and I, yeah, I, I was, go by on a mag protocol. It has different cut cutoff points, but I, as long as they're normal, I wouldn't give any magnesium. There is some advantage. Some people think of bronchospasm. Magnesium can yeah. be used for asthma, but he's not bronchospastic. I don't think there's no, any he, to I, I was also wondering about the albuterol. I mean, I, he's getting it, but I, there's no wheezing at all. Well, it's just you know, he's, got a, he's got a bad pneumonia, and it's just trying to dilate his airway so he can handle secretions better. Uh, right. Trying to getting them up. That's all. But, but, right. But it is but you know, on, your mag, on your magnesium protocol, it calls for two grams if you do have a level of blood. Dr. Good? Yeah. Try to point it out. I, I asked the staff why they gave the magnesium and they showed me your protocol and it, it does call for two grams. Well, you know, I, 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 it's adjusted to another hospital in terms of the level. I'll have to adjust okay. it to your hospital. That, that's done right. on a different normal level. So I'll, I'll right. adjust it for where you know. I think you're, you're right, Bruce. That's big right. Yeah. Okay. okay. I was just uh, curious how, about it. How does he look today? <clears throat> I haven't seen him, but he's been stable. His vital signs have been stable. Good. He slept during the night. He's standing at 92 to 95 on 60 mm percent -hmm. FiO2. Mm -hmm. uh, white count's still about 11,000. Mm -hmm. uh, chemistries are normal. Mm -hmm. Well, he's, his albumin's down to 1.7 this morning. His intake is very poor. He's right. eating 0 to 20 percent. He saturates uh, rapidly. When he's off the mask, he's in the 70s. I was asked about super infection. They just went in one, and, and, and there was an article in the New England Journal about three months ago, had about 20 autopsy patients in Mexico, we had H1N1, and uh, the uh, problem of a superinfection was very minor. Mm -hmm. It looks like with this virus, H1N1, you're not seeing as much staph, 
AIDS, flu, right. and so on, as, as with, for example, 1957, the influenza epidemic. And I know he's covered with um, uh, Ridiculin and uh, Imipen, Imipenin. Yeah. Uh, and and, 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 and uh, Levicum. But I, I think that with H1N1, superfection aren't as much a problem. I think it's probably all viral pneumonia, more likely. Yeah. NEJM said, I saw a blurb about a month ago that said that uh, 30% of ICU admits with H1N1 were co-infected, uh, a little under a third. Yeah, I think but, I, I, I debate that. I think it'd be more like one in 25 from that. That's a, that's a debate back and forth going on in yeah. infectious diseases. But yeah. I don't think it's yeah. a big, big problem. The way it had been uh -huh. with, for example, 1918, 1957. Right. Okay. Right. Oh, Listen, yeah. I'm going to spin in and just see him a minute, if I may. Sure. Yeah. Yes, yeah, hi. X-rays up. I don't see his X-rays. Yeah, sure, let's just go got the X-ray. Yeah. 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 I'll come over with you. This is a fellow with H1N1. His father has documented H1N1. His studies aren't back yet, as far as I know. How old is he, Jim? He's 61. Dr. Good? Yeah. There was an emergency use authorization by the FDA on Friday for coronavirus IV, specifically for H1N1, for ICU patients who were not today. otherwise. I didn't know that was approved. I saw the articles on private Okay. It Thank you. Our approved for the UA on Friday. Did you hear that, um, Bruce? No, I didn't. Dr. Yeah. Thayer is in the audience here, and he said that Pomavir, has, which I, exists as one of the Reveres, has been released yeah, for it. compassionate yeah. use IV. So we'll think about it on this guy, but, but if he's sort of better holding, his O2 stats are holding, I don't think we have to go to it. <coughs> you know? uh -huh. well, look at his x-ray, right. he's just got a bilateral patchy pneumonia. Right. Maybe a little bit, maybe a little clearer on the right upper. Yeah, it was thicker on the right upper before, I agree. And you know that's a viral pneumonia, the way it looks. Patchy, bilateral, both lungs, yep. no consolidation. I don't see effusions either. Uh, nope. So I think that we've got an H1N1 pneumonia. What do they do? Yeah, I think so. And I agree. It, it looks to me that he's reached his nadir. And I thought he was worse yesterday by description. That's why I ended the steroids, which is right. the, uh, the last resort of a pulmonologist. Yes, I understand. I'm sort of a dermatologist of internal medicine. But I don't know what to do. <laughs> steroids. Okay. Uh, well, I'm he's, he's no better in 72 days we stop him. Okay, in 72 hours we stop him. Okay. Let's go take a look at him. All right. Okay. So we have his family here, his mother okay. and father. Are they in the room with him? Right behind yeah. you. Well, how do you do, folks? Right here. Hi, listen. Hello. Uh, Dr. Andich and I uh, just looked at the x I met you folks the other day when I was on Browns. I think things are stable. I think they are. I think we're doing fine with current treatment. We're just going to hold where we are. Dr. Andich has got the, all the uh, angles covered. And I hope that he'll really turn around now. One doesn't know, but I'm hopeful looking at the x-ray. It looks a little better. And uh, he's holding. For example, this morning he took the, uh, the mask off, the BiPAP mask off, and had a little bit of uh, breakfast and tolerated it for a while. We had to put him back on. Um, but I'm, I'm hopeful things are better. Okay, folks? Hi. Okay. Do you have any Thank questions? Thank you so much. Oh, you're welcome. You're welcome. Any questions? We're going, we're going no, no not, not if he's improving. Um, I think he's stable to improving. Okay. Wonderful. Okay. I'm going to well, he was so sick, you know, he didn't really come in until Sunday, so. Yes, ma'am. So it's just, you know, I guess we just give the medicine a chance to take effect. How's his dad doing? <laughs> Uh, yesterday I heard he was doing okay. Good. Okay, good. good. Yeah. Dad had H1N1 and one was in Central Lakeside. Okay. Okay, let's go take a look at him. Goodbye, folks. I'll come right beside you. I'm going to run you over right. right here. Thank you. Are <coughs> you awake in here? Uh, Mount Mahaney. Hello, sir. Hey. Hi, nice to see you. Listen, I know you're sitting up probably snorkeling with that BiPAP on, but it does help us a little bit. Um, Bruce, I'll defer to you to, to chat with you a minute. I'll just listen here. The robot doesn't have to put a mask on. What do you think? Lucky. There you go.